Is it not absurd that we have an aggressor at the Olympics, possibly, and the victim at home and giving up their dream? Is that not absurd, watching a bully win? Mm -hmm. That, to me, makes me not even want to watch the Olympics, Mm -hmm. I have to say, because that's not what the Olympics stand for. It's absurd and it's sad. To the 40 plus Canadian athletes who also signed the stern letter to the Canadian Olympic Committee, the likes of hockey star Haley Wickenheiser, soccer great Steph Labe, the prospect of Russian and Belarusian athletes competing in Paris is also an about face. Right after the invasion, athletes from those two nations were banned from international competition. Now the stance seems to be softening. The war is not. After this letter is delivered, what are you expecting to happen with the COC and what would you like to see happen? A retraction. Quite honestly, we're hoping for a retraction and that they pull back that position of support for Russia. It is support for Russia at a time when Russia is engaged in an unlawful, inhumane war and it's morally and, you know, ethically wrong. There have been, you know, governing bodies that have stood up against the IOC and said, no, we don't want them to be here until you get, you, you get out of Ukraine. Uh, Sweden has done it, uh, Denmark, Norway. Why hasn't our country done that? All we're asking is for our country to do it. Is it hard to stand up to Russia? Is it hard to stand up to Thomas Bach and the IOC? Absolutely. You have to have moral courage and you have to do what's right. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're asking our governing body to do. Words have weight, especially when you consider the source. All these Olympians, Jen Kish, Becky Scott, Perdita Felicien are retired now, but their leaders, involvement in Canadian sports, still critical to their lives and professions, making saying this a bit of a risk. They insist they've had private conversations with the Canadian Olympic Committee and nothing's changed, so they're coming forward. I definitely probably won't ever get a job with the COC. (laughs) <laughs> they're not calling you. They're not calling they're not me not anytime calling soon. Anybody who uh, sponsors who are associated with the COC may want to stay away from me. Nobody likes when athletes go against, you know, the status quo. The status quo. So it's worth it for you. You got to do what's right. That's that's real leadership. We did weigh the risks and we did weigh the potential implications and consequences, you know, but the greater risk to us is staying silent and complicit with this statement because we disagree with it so strongly. So if there's someone at home who says, I hear you, the war is terrible, Russia invaded, this is awful, but an athlete is not Putin. An athlete is someone who's living a dream. Why ban the athletes? It is not easy, I think, for us to not think about the individual weight of this on a Russian athlete, a Belarusian athlete, who has nothing to do with the war, who opposes the war, and we know that they exist. But this is not about an individual dream. This is about basic human rights. It really is about being on the right side, I think, of history for a lot of us. And so um, when I think about what Ukrainian people are going through, and I think about an individual um, Russian or Belarusian athlete potentially not going to Paris 2024, to me, there's no comparison in what's at stake. That reference Perdita makes to Russian athletes who oppose the war is interesting. A few weeks ago, the CEO of the Canadian Olympic Committee told CBC in an interview that if there's some way of having exemptions for those athletes who can prove to us they're opposed to the war, we'd be willing to consider what the international community has in mind. But this may not be possible for Russian athletes when thousands in Russia have been detained for protesting the war. Some athletes boldly wear the letter Z on their uniforms, clear support of the war, and some are soldiers. And you know the IOC. You, you know how it works there. You have, you have been in those rooms. What are the conversations you think are happening right now? I mean, I think the IOC and Russia have some very deep ties. Russia is a very powerful, well-resourced nation with deep pockets and the capacity to host big events, major games, they are a very important partner to the IOC. I think that the, the reason and the rationale behind this then follows that they want to stay connected to their partners. Have you heard any conversations about a potential boycott? If the IOC is unwilling to budge and says, nope, they're part, they're part of the Olympic Games. 
I think the only group or language around boycott that I've heard from is the actual um, National Olympic Committee of Ukraine, because fundamentally the idea of athletes from Ukraine um, sharing a pool or a track or a field with athletes from Russia is pretty morally reprehensible. If I was still playing, I would be okay sitting out of these games for the betterment of people and their lives. The, the, the Olympics are about unity and peace. To me, how do we avoid even having the conversation of Canada even boycotting? I know if I was an Olympian, it would be a hard thing. But why not go to each governing body and ask them to put pressure on the IOC? But if one begins, why can't the others? It could be a groundswell. And we're hoping it just begins a conversation. We heard back from the Canadian Olympic Committee tonight in a statement. It condemns the Russian invasion and values the opinions it says raised by these Canadian athletes. It also says it supports, quote, the continuation of the ban in the absence of clarity and concrete details on a workable neutrality model. For the full statement and more details, go to cbcnews.ca.